This week on Slap My Joystick, we rehabilitate your face. Cyberspace, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Joystick. Its continuing mission to explore strange new games, redeem the old, and pull everything through a warped sense of mind. To boldly go where no man, woman, or heterogeneous being has dared to go before. Captain's Log, Star Date, negative three one one three seven six point one three. Missions would be complete on time if not for the changes in course at every rumor of the elusive albino space whale, thanks to our navigator in sync, Jimmy the Fishing Buddha. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Luckily, to keep the ship flying, unless distracted by alien strippers or the over multiplying triples, we owe credit to Chief Engineer ADHD Mike. Zap! In charge of sick bay, keeping us all well by making us cough. Our chief medical officer, Dr. G-Wow. I am not part of this. <laughs> <laughs> and seeing this mission through is your captain, Stevie Christ. Woo! Stevie Christ! Stevie Christ! <laughs> so what's up, guys? What have you all been playing? Hmm. Mm, my app of the week that I never got in. Fling! <laughs> <laughs> you talk about it? Yeah, Go ahead and talk it's about like it. It's like a little puzzle game. And you, and you, like, you have to get all the balls... Out of the the, hmm. the board, what? And only leave one ball standing. <laughs> one ball standing. <laughs> one nut. It's fling. Fling. <laughs> fling. Well, I've been playing like it's it's been out for a while. I've been playing it here and there. Uh, the Hunter online. It's uh, www.thehunter.com. It's a hunting simulation, which is pretty much. Only good one out there. I don't like it. Uh, you can hunt for free there. You can hunt uh, mule deer. Try it out. It's got really good graphics, really good design, a lot of hunting woods. They have a lot of animals now, everything from pheasants to bear to elk to deer. It's a pretty good game. I mean, I like hunting and fishing, obviously. But What? You do? Yeah. yeah. Surprise. But uh, it, I really do like it. As I'll jump on it at times and you know, play for like a month straight and then stop a little bit and then come back. I always come back to that game. You always it's, come back to the game. It's fun. It's, it's a really good hunt. If you like hunting games, I do recommend checking it out. It's, it's, it'll take a little time to download everything, but you can play for free with uh, the Hunt Mule Deer, so give it a try. Cause it's... You like hunting, you're, you'll like the game. I think the last hunting game I was played was back in high school when we had, uh, what was that, a white tail hunting game. It was like really big at the time on the PCs. I remember yeah. we used to to download them on the uh, the computer labs all the time. Was that Deer Hunter? White, you know, yeah, you know Deer what? Hunter, that's yeah, what was it was. Say, Deer Hunter was one of the bigger ones that came out. And oh, I did God. like them a lot. I played like every one of them. They got better, it's like, better. Look at the and then, screen and wait for a deer to come across. No, no, oh, the no, first the one best was rough. hunting games. The one with the but laughing dog and you guys shoot the duck. The duck hunt, duck hunt. Duck hunt. That is the duck best hunt. hunting game ever. That's a good one. But yeah, deer hunters. Deer hunter was good. They came out. They start. I think they started it because then Cabela's jumped in. A couple other ones. Uh, yeah, deer hunting unlimited, which was also good. Cabela's. I don't like their hunting games too much because they just. I've been playing them, but just, I don't know. It don't work for me. They don't seem so realistic. Really? I like yeah. the ones, I I, didn't, I don't play them because, pff, whatever. But I always like the ones where like the commercials are like, the, the bear's going to get you and stuff. Yeah, with those dangerous hunts and stuff, I didn't play too much. I played one over Ronnie's. It's it's not more hunting. It's more like an action game. You're just trying to get through the levels. Then the previous hunting games of Capella's were... You have to take down, like, say, a white tail buck, and there's different sections in the map, but each time you go to a section of the map, there's usually, like, when I played, there was, like, maybe one animal, and it might not even been that animal. So once you see the animal, it's not it, and then you gotta go to the other section, and then you gotta see if it's there, but they only had one animal. Right. Whereas, like, say, Deer Hunter and then the Hunter.com, 
you know, you see all, all different animals at once. You know, you get a herd of deer. Or I know some of the deer hunter games uh, once we'll had an albino in there if you could find, happen to come be lucky enough to come across one. So there was always multiple animals, and with hunting, you, know, you have multiple. Like, say, if you're hunting mule deer, you'll, there's multiple mule deer with different style antlers, whereas Cabela's there just isn't. Hmm. I think Cabela's, I know Cabela's could do a great job. They just, they're putting it now, it seems like they're going toward more like an action game. You know, because you've got dangerous hunts where you're going through the levels, you shoot Gears birds, of war with deer. Yeah, you shoot this and this, and then you get to the boss, which could be a bear, and you got to try to take out the bear. And, the bear Jew? Yeah. So, I said, if you like hunting, definitely try out the hunter. I've been playing um, Grand Theft Auto in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> yeah. Did you win? No. Oh. Kind he of. Even, sort he of. didn't even get six stars. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I haven't played anything. Again. What is this kind of? What? Why am I on here? You're like on a streak, man. I don't know. I can't play games. No, but I swear. I swear to. Stevie Christ, the holy that is, I am playing Max Payne 3 this week. It is happening. I don't care. <laughs> I will go to Walmart and buy the freaking game. I don't care. It's p- going to happen. Max Payne 3, I'm talking about it next week. Just deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. And Steve, yeah, yes. you're going to play Diablo 3 this week. We're going to have sh- stuff to talk about. As as long as it, I have something to talk about to this week. Because I've got the Vita back out and I'm playing Mortal Kombat. That's Ooh. right. Steve's got the combat yeah. going on. We dis- he discussed this with me earlier this week. It was very good. Talk to me, Steve. Talk to me. Yeah, I mean, I've got story mode. I'm up to, I'm assuming he's the last fight. I was. I thought I was at the last fight at one point, but apparently I was only halfway through the game. But now I'm up to Shao Kahn. And you go, go into the x-ray modes, which usually knocks out like almost half the person's life. And it hardly even touches him. <laughs> oh, man. And yet he, he wells on you and you're dead within seconds. So it's like... So then I started... I backed up. I figured, oh, I'll put that aside. I went back and started doing the, the challenge towers. And now I'm stuck on the one because uh, you have Johnny Cage and whoever that sergeant guy is. The police officer lurking dude. And you have to bounce back and forth between them and kill zombies using their, their ranged ability attack abilities and it's just a pain <laughs> oh yeah so i'm stuck on that point now too did you think were um were fatalities easier like was it touch screen at all i've i've really not used it on a touch screen much is it is it there though it's like, there okay i haven't 100 percent figured it out because i mean if they're still the same where you know it's like me might be left right down up X or something, but I'm not. A, I haven't really figured out how it's supposed to. Unless, unless what you're supposed to do is just do the directions on the touch screen, then hit the button. I've really not messed with it that much. But so, what do you think of the overall game? Like for being Vita size. Personally, I love it. I mean, a lot of people I've read comments where they're complaining at saying it was PS2 graphics and stuff. But to me, I mean, it looks amazing. And I, I really wanted to try it, but that's not going to happen. But that's cool. I mean, because the game is fun. I played it on the 360 a while back, like last year or whatever, and that story mode's awesome on it. Oh, yeah, it's got a great storyline. Which is, you know... Which, go ahead. It's pretty, but pretty much what it does is it... I, like, a, was there a Port, Mortal Kombat 2 movie? Yeah. Yeah, because I've never seen the second one, but what I'm told is it's... The, the first sec- set is pretty much going through the first story, and then the, I guess the second set's going through the second movie or something... It's just nice to have, like, you know, because fighting games really don't have any good stories. They're just like, you know, I'm going to go avenge my father's death. And yeah. Well, it's like I love DOA, but, yeah, that was that story storyline on that was just the same, just like what you said. Yes. It has a little, it has a short little cut scene where, oh, you did this. I'll kill you now. And then you go fight. This one actually has, you know, like if you're in a noisy area, you want to put headsets in so you can hear what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good. That is good though. Yeah, I remember some of that story, and it was it was pretty impressive. Oh man, back in the good old days of last year, of the yesteryear, of the yesteryear, <laughs> yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Sing it. I don't want to. <laughs> Bring it home, Mike. I'm a virgin. Twice. <laughs> Once bitten, twice shy, oh, babe. babe. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. 
It's called the Sing Cast. Sing it, Gwen. Sing something, Gwen. Five little speckled frogs. Sitting on a speckled log, eating the most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool. Where it was nice and cool. <laughs> Go, like Gwen. I want to feel the blues. <laughs> the soul, man. Five little speckled frogs. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, we're, we're putting an end to this. <laughs> I felt I was feeling it. All right, everybody, it's time for Name the Game. Name the Game. Last week's winner, we gave it out. We could give it to Nin. So we'll say Nin to win. Nin to win. For entering Tetris. So bless you, Nin. Go, Nin or NYN and... Ooh, Good Daddy job. Darkwin for saying it in the chat room. <laughs> yes, because then we got whispers from everybody. Well, Tetris, even though I Tetris, wasn't in Tetris. chat room last week. Yeah. Oh, working. you missed it. Daddy <laughs> Darkwin said it he without the whisper. Stuff. Oh, my God. And everybody started whispering after that. He slipped that <laughs> thing more clever than a roofie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But your first hint. This game was created by Tecmo in 1986. It's a scrolling pat- platform. And you assume the role as the legendary warrior. Do, 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 do. This sounds... Wow, you know what? I know you even told me this beforehand, and I don't remember what it is. That's a good clue. Or hint. Because I don't... I, I'm sitting here racking my brain at the moment. If you, were, if you remember we were talking a while back about virtual gaming and, like, virtual worlds and stuff, and I mentioned about... Being able to change my dreams. Yes, I remember that. Well, I found this. It's a she's a psychologist at Grant McHugh University in Canada. Her name is Jane. A. <laughs> J- Jane Gackenbach. Gackenbach. Whole Canada. Gackenbach. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, she's been doing studies. And it's, this isn't like a hundred percent conclusive. It's just like it's studies not peer reviewed, basically. Yeah. But she finds a pattern with gamers and lucid dreams and being able to alter their dreams. So, more or less, the more the more somebody is a gamer, the more they have control over their dreams is what she's, she's finding out in her studies. Really? Like, so what she's saying, basically, if you play more video games, you are able to control... More, you have a better percentage of controlling your dreams? Yeah. Oh, that sounds interesting. Because what it is, is it's your dream... It's... When you're playing the game... Of life. You're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you're, you're making is you're making a virtual world, which a dream is more or less a virtual world. Right. When you're playing a game, you're controlling it. So it kind of, apparently it kind of connects the two, so when you're actually dreaming, your brain goes into that mode that knows it's not real. I would love to see like an MRI study on it, just to see what part of the brain is actually being activated whenever you're playing video games. No, yours, apparently. And then, like, apply that to uh, whenever you're dreaming, an MRI, the same thing done. I wonder how she did it. I'm curious. Like, uh, was it this just say so? Because if it is just say so, it's hard to believe it. It makes sense. It, well, I mean, it she does. makes sense. She does the tests and stuff, but, I mean, it's more or less, you know, just like um, here, here outside of D.C., they have the National Institute of Health. And I've I was working there doing punch list stuff a while back, and you'll see places where there'll be a sign up on a on a wall saying "Looking for volunteers for insomnia research studies." So more or less, you go in and you're volunteering to let them do tests on you. I would say. So like this them. is the same concept where you know people are she's people are going in and letting them study her, and you know they'll probably monitor them like like you said like EKGs or whatever. Uh, they probably have them, you know, get up, wake them up and have them write down what they, what they've witnessed and what they've done and all that type of stuff too. Well, here's the thing: who all here can actually control their dreams? Sometimes let's not even say all the time. Let's just say once in a while. Can you actually do it? I can from time to time. I did it once, uh, very rarely. I, I do it a lot. <laughs> Must be man. Nice. I want to go in stitching because I know there's gonna be some. Uh, never mind. But I, see, this is where this, this kind of like ties in too, because they're talking about. People who just have lucid dreams compared to a gamer's lucid dreams. When you go into a nightmare mode, I mean, what, what would you? 
if you have a nightmare, what do you do most of the time? Cry. Uh, I wake up from it. Yeah, I, I can wake. <laughs> I get. I used to. I. I mean, I haven't had nothing bad, but uh, back in the day. <laughs> And this the only part, I mean, I did control a lot of it this way, is if there was, like, if I was having a bad dream or whatever, say nightmare, whatever's going on, and if I, in the dream, I always remembered if I would close my eyes, tighten the dream, and open them, I'd actually wake up. So I used to be able to do that, but that's the only control I ever had. Yeah, see, I had night terrors as a kid. I get very, very realistic dreams, like hardcore realistic. And there's always some red-headed girl on them. It drives me insane. I want to know well, who see, this, this is girl what is. <laughs> this is what she's finding out is like what it is is gamers when they have nightmares they turn it into something fun you know so let me say she's this finding that gamers they don't run from whatever it is they're afraid of they turn around they fight it wait like oh my god you're talking about dream warriors nightmare on elm street part three <laughs> oh, snap. no when i have a nightmare i just go to sleep because my nightmare is when i'm, I'm when i'm awake <laughs> <laughs> no seriously dream warriors oh my god yes yeah i can't honestly say if i actually I would say I'm more of a runner than anything. But see, that's all, but that's the thing. You remember, I always say my dreams are Armageddon, and this mm. is a, this is why I relate to this because that's what it is. It's I turn around and I'm fighting in a fight. I'm either saving myself or I'm saving somebody else. But more or less, I'm in a fight, and I'm fighting my way to whatever it is. The promised land, man. <laughs> you got a one way ticket to midnight, <laughs> and also. Like a gamer, their the overall aggression in their dream it isn't really. They don't have a lot of aggression, but whenever they do get aggressive in their dream, it's like R-rated type stuff, like snuff films. More or less, if you're, if you're comparing like a PG-13 horror movie to an R-rated, more it's going to be more gory. I would oh, definitely yes. say mine's definitely R-rated. Yeah, me too. Definitely. Yours is probably NC-17. <laughs> Yeah, but they said it in their in their studies that the gamers are less aggressive, but when they actually do get aggressive in their dreams, they it's just like completely blown off the top. There's like no control on them. Yeah, mine mine sometimes actually get nasty. They're that that aggressive and detailed. Boy, I'm Which, glad I, I mean, that's what I have. Do. I mean, because I remember like one of there's like big like, there's somebody hunting. Me, it was me and somebody else. They were mm -hmm. like hunting us. And there was wild boars, and like they had big dogs and stuff. And I remember somebody killed this big boar, and I remember turning around, and I was like, "The thing ain't dead." And went to get up, and all I know is I pulled knives out and I cut its throat, this, that, and the other. Yes. And then a, a little bit later, I'm on a roof, and the person with me had like a spear, and there's these dogs prowling. And I remember I was like staying on a roof, stabbing the spears down through the through the dogs from the roof. See, I had, so I had a like... dream one time where, like, <laughs> I watched them let snakes bet, snakes go into this girl's bed, and they were just, like, annihilating her, like, blood dripping and everything, like, just, like, a million snakes, like, attacking this person. That's because you have fear of I mean, snakes. I do have a fear of snakes. It was freaking gross. Like, it, like, you, like, 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 in the eyeball and stuff. Ew. We're all having nightmares tonight. <laughs> I just don't. I don't dream that much. It was anymore. like Roman well, time remember. period too. The dream was like in place. So you're watching Here, Spartacus and Fear Snakes. Here's where we get into like what I, what I want to cover this today is like gaming and helping people because if gaming helps people through their nightmares, this, that, and the other, what about like veterans with post traumatic stress disorder? That's true. It's very true. So would you be able to use gaming, you know, if they if it can get you through nightmares, and that's kind of like what they're, it's like a reacting, reliving, it's like a living nightmare to them, would it help them get through that? It, it depends, I think it depends on if it's stimulating a certain part of your brain that allows you to have control over dreams, <coughs> or not. If, it, if that is what the study comes up to be conclusive on, then yes. Because then you're giving them the ability okay. to control it and therefore helping them in the future. Okay. Now, if it's inconclusive, then I don't Here's know. what I'm wondering then. Because, like, you know how, like, they come back with post-traumatic stress syndrome from, like, war and stuff? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't a game have the ability to trigger it? That's, boom, boom, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it. That's, that's why I say if it's conclusive that it, it uh, stimulates a certain part of the brain that gives them control over it, even if it triggers some of it and, you know, whatnot, you can... You can change the type of games that they play, and you can still stimulate that part of the brain. You know what I'm saying? You're not saying they have to play uh, war games. You mean like make them play? You mean like Matthew play Broderick freaking... in war games? <laughs> I'm sorry, but you had to go there. You said war games. I want war games. I'm blue right now. 
I, mean, I just see like if I that's the true, show. It, it has potential. The show makes you just like figure out what Blu-rays to buy next. I like it. <laughs> 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 that's all it is. This is, this is a I'm ad just, propaganda yeah. for like. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just I just show up just to see what I can figure out what to buy next. Because <laughs> I got the last Starfighter, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that was good. <laughs> yep, gotta go on Amazon. Hold on a second. Okay, go ahead. But yeah, that's definitely an interesting uh, spin on it. Like, what's the actual benefits of it? And then if they can't figure it out and they figure out what part of the brain it's stimulating that it doesn't in non gamers, then they can actually create games specifically used just to stimulate that part of the brain and actually create a. a uh, uh, a treatment out of it. Go, hey, play this for so many hours, and then they can get in control over their gaming and uh, their dreams and stuff. That's actually really cool. The future. The We've future. just got a glimpse. The virtual <laughs> reality ish. Well, here, talking about having control over your like, emotions and everything, there is actually a children's hospital in Boston. Boston. And they. they Boston. Gadden. <laughs> Car. Chatter. No, it's a car. It's not a Shout car. It. But they use video games to help their kids with anger management. Really? Help them to control their emotions. <clears throat> what, what it is, they have a Space Invaders type style game, and they'll have a little monitor on their pinky to track their heart rate. So if they get too excited, like, off at the game because they're losing or whatever, the heart rate will go up and it'll cause them not to be able to shoot to, at all. Huh. But you would, at the one sense, you would think it would f*** them off, but... What it is, is they said they find that kids don't want to deal with anger management techniques like relaxation and stuff like that, but yet they'll spend hours trying to master a game. Yeah, that's actually that's actually pretty genius. It sets a goal that they want to win. You know, they want to learn how to control it. Then. That's actually, yeah, that's a really clever idea. I mean, like you said, you'd think they'd get like more mad because you're like, I, I'm too mad and I can't push buttons now. But no, it would actually call and be like, okay, I got to calm down. Or I can't mm-hmm. continue. Oh, I, I, I'd probably just get mad and rip the or, thing, or, sensor off my finger and be like, screw that. Or they'd go all Twinkie on it and just freaking sure the thing at the wall. Yeah, one or the other. Especially when a guy comes around the corner and I'm like, get him, and I can't shoot. And then that, that'd be it. Paddle be I fine. don't know. I mean, I know what you're saying. I'll show you one question. That's <laughs> clever, though. I think that's cl- kind of clever. Uh, yeah, I definitely Why couldn't do. you think about it? Think of it, G-Wa. We could be millionaires. We could have been. I had an idea, but then somebody already stole it before. Son, like, they didn't steal it. Year, years before, before I came up with the idea, but I didn't know they came up with it, so therefore they stole it. <laughs> stamp, stamp. <laughs> but yeah, so and through this game though, they're you know they might not want to do the breathing stuff, but it's going to force them that they're going to have to. So what they do is they'll teach them the strategies to do it, and then they'll put them in the game, on the game, and then know that they're kind of required that they have to use it to keep calm to pl- finish the game through <laughs> completely. So, is there any like any um? Uh, Results to this, like did it, like so far, is there any results to how this works or has it worked? They really didn't give it any like any actual results of like any statistics of what it actually did. But I do like it. I mean, it's I just think it's a it's a I'm just kind of like sitting there going, that's freaking clever. That's really it, clever. It, it is clever. I I like the aspect of using gaming and stuff like that to teach those kind of concepts, just because you're there's so much more involve involvement. You True. Know? You have to learn, like, okay, if you're in this game and you're playing or whatever and you're getting mad, 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 like, that's when you really get mad. When you're playing games, you tend to get mad. Oh, yeah. Tend to? Tend to. Oh, I know. I get mad playing Mortal Kombat now because it's like, yeah. die already, die! <laughs> you're like, no, we're taking a controller away from you until you start It's like, yourself who down. can count how many <clears throat> times one of their games, consoles, or whatever, has been this close to being thrown against the wall? Oh, oh yeah, 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 the Wii, the Wii, the Wii, the Wii. <laughs> You know, we all think about it from time to time. Like, I just want to smash you if you weren't worth so much money. <laughs> and there was another game I wanted, I would so smash you. <laughs> now, see, I never came close to throwing my console. Because it's always on the other side of the room. Maybe the controller. Yeah. Yeah, at least <laughs> maybe you, the controller. Maybe you throw the controller at the console. Which, in which case, I, I kind of, I have been pissed, like, at the phone or something and, like, throwing stuff. But I usually kind of do it controlled so i'll throw it at the couch <laughs> oh you know what i do steve sometimes when i get mad and usually this doesn't happen often because you know i mean when you're younger yeah it's easy to get mad at video games like when you get older you still get mad but not to that point where you're like you know whatever not as much but i'd sit there like and just 
to start pounding like the the, the controller off the bed because you know you're not hurting anything. <laughs> like stupid, stupid, you know, a bunch of swear words. I just can't control her up to bed, and I'm happy. Speaking of stuff like that, have you seen the video of the kid that uh, his mom canceled his WoW account? Uh, no. He's the, the brother. Like set up a camera in the room, so this kid runs upstairs and he's screaming. He's throwing himself on the bed. He's ripping his clothes off, throwing them on the on the floor, and then he's like. In his underwear, jumping on a bed, throwing himself on the bed, screaming and yelling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because man. His, it, because his mom canceled his WoW account. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Kids are nuts. That's crazy. That's hilarious. Yes, I, I think he needs the anger management. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Subject one. <laughs> Subject number one. Stop throwing tantrum. Or we, sh- or we shock you. We give you a lobotomy. Shock, shock, shock therapy and gaming. Shock therapy gaming. Uh, I'm so sure. <laughs> Talk about force feedback. <laughs> okay, everybody, it's time to listen. Listen up. This is hint number two for Name That Game. Gonna play a little clip here. Here we go. That's your second hint. If you know what it is by now, be sure to whisper Whisper. somebody in the chat room. Whisper that stuff. If you go Daddy Darkwin on us, I'm sorry, but we're going to get very angry. I'm going to throw a fit. I'll probably throw some computer. Wait, no, it's already dead. I will eat your soul. (laughs) (laughs) I just wanted to say that Fishing Buddha keeps rubbing his head off um, off the pop filter. I like it. And he was licking the thing before. I was biting it. <laughs> biting it. He was. Does it taste like chicken? No, it's metal. <laughs> Does it need salt? But yeah, salt it, would work. Put some barbecue and salt on it. He'll be like, "Om nom nom." Cook it on the grill. Put some crab chips on it. Ooh, there you go. Oh, crab chips. Crab chips. Crab chips. Stop being silly. <laughs> Get to the serious talk now. All right. So if it helps, if gaming can help with anger management. The other things you could help it with, because there is an actual thing called uh, alternate hills, and one of them on there is called video therapy, and that's the whole thing is based off of helping with video games to cure problems like poor concentration, memory disorders, all by stimulating brain cells re- repeatedly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know there's actually a lot of apps out there that do that kind of thing. Because you like need a lot your brain of memory stimulated. builders and stuff like that. No, it's actually good, especially for people that are aging, because they mm. say if they do like memory games. And Why stuff are you looking like at that, Jim? I don't know. He's straight across from me. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> no, like, it's actually good for them. That's constantly stimulating. Well, their what brain. about that game on the, the Nintendo game, Brain Brain Trainers? Oh man, what was it on DS? You know what I'm talking about, Steve? I know what you're talking about. It's Oh, man. I'm so glad somebody has a computer to look at this stuff up on. <laughs> brain, a- brain age. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Brain age. There's one. I was saying, I thought I bought one of those. <laughs> it's been a while, but... I think they're making a new one. It's supposed to be kind of even better. Yeah, that does, you know, it's a good idea to kind of keep certain parts of your brain going. But I mean, that's that's I mean that that I mean I so I, the type of games I try to get Hayden to play because I know like you have matching sections or whatever, it's just going to make them smarter because it's, it's more or less it's the same thing you would do in school on a piece of paper. It's just more fun because it's a game you push buttons. Yeah, I push which is buttons. why they cover about this uh, video therapy being more effective for kids because if you have a therapist, I mean he's he's going to try to get you to do all these tests and stuff, but. The kids aren't going to be interested. Where if they have a game, the kids are automatically going to be interested. And it's going to make the therapist easier to have them, if that's their prescription or whatever. It's going to ha- make it easier for them to do it. Yeah, it's like like when they get that level of interaction they can relate to, they're all for it. Because a therapist, like you said, a therapist or whatever, just going to sit there and go, you know, how's your day? Tell me this. Tell me that. Blah 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 blah. It's not cool. It's not. Well, it was fun for me, but um, I got to talk about a lot of good stuff. I'm just saying. I like therapy. 
I, get I mean, that. even based off of what they said, they they're even saying that it's becoming regular, more regular uh, mode of treatment because it's even said that video games can cure colds. What? Whoa, Which, whoa. That's 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 what they're saying. I mean, I don't know how they didn't say. That's pretty much it's all it said on their website and bottomed out at that. And I was like, uh, well, where's your details on? You know, how's it supposed to cure a cold? Unless it's like a mind over matter kind of thing. I really don't know. That would be interesting, but like you said, there's no more. There's no detail there. Yeah, it's kind of like, oh well, we can't, we can't say anything about it. I, I don't, I don't like to like believe things that I can't validate. I would like to oh. see research. Oh, I know. Like, Gwen, you have a cold, so you need to sit down and start playing games, and we need to find out if this is true. Yeah. 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 So you don't feel good. I should try that. <laughs> we'll be back in five minutes while Gbot plays a game. No. <laughs> I don't think PV's talked in like twenty minutes. What's going on, PV? Nothing. Fishing good. <laughs> Does somebody need a hug? <laughs> somebody, somebody needs a bed. <laughs> you mean I must not go Felipe? to bed without Game of Thrones. <laughs> I've, I've seen it already. Felipe. Yeah, let me tell yeah, you what Felipe. happens. Yes, yeah, so let us discuss what happens yeah. on Game of Thrones. Yeah. This week on Game of Thrones. <laughs> People I, die. People do weird What's things. What's the midget's <laughs> name? I can never think of his name. Tyrion T- Lannister. Tyrion, yeah. Tyrion. Start Love calling him. him by his name. No, I can't help it. I call him the midget too much. I forget. He is a dwarf. He's not a midget. He's exactly. A dwarf. He's a dwarf. Whatever. Tyrion, he's awesome. He's my favorite character. I love you. <laughs> Throw something in there, Jim. I know you're dying, too. He's an amazing actor. I'm just playing with my pop filter. Yeah, you're rubbing your nose against it. It and feels cool. nice. And he's going to save the people. Hmm. Hey. It's soft. Hello. And it doesn't make no noise. It's like David the Gnome. Oh, yeah. Rubbing noses. Rubbing noses. Against pop filters. Mm-hmm. This is therapy for me. This is a calm <laughs> soul. If I could record this, this would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. so. That was me pretending not to be a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbing my nose on the pop filter. I wonder if they... Can't stop, can you? No. No, I'm addicted to freaking nose... Pop filter rubbing things stuff. Ooh, let me touch it. And Feels it's soft. Mm. Like my face. This is therapy. Tyrion's the only awesome one. Okay, enough of that. Okay, Gwen, you just shut your I'm mouth over obsessed. there. I have a problem. I wish I had a poster. If you don't, if you don't be quiet about it, we will literally sit here and tell you what I happens. want a life-size poster of him. I want a cardboard <laughs> cutout. That'd be freaking awesome. You walk in my house, I'd be like, hey, look at Tyrion. <laughs> You'd have to look I'd, down. I would, like, take him everywhere I went. I'd, like, take his cardboard cut out and, like, go to, like, sheets and be like, well, can I have a coffee for him, too? <laughs> I have also Speaking shaking my head, Steve. I'd go, Speaking of therapy. I'd go out to eat and I'd sit him right next to me and I'd try to spoon feed him. <laughs> oh, this is just... Okay, this is and, my, and, and rubbing our noses on a pop filter is, is, yeah. good, is bad, is wrong? I really. want a cardboard cut out. <laughs> go make one, you lazy I think bastard. you people need some gaming therapy. <laughs> I think so. Wait, there is Game oh. of Thrones the game. It's coming out. <laughs> it's not gonna be what you think. I'm telling you now. I don't care. I will. F- I will find out if there is no Tyrion in it. Then. Oh, screw gee, up. well, you're like me. You ain't playing no games this week either. <laughs> <laughs> I want my cardboard cut out though. I'm thinking of all the fun things I could. Do. I could just hey. stand at the corner hey, and well. wave at people. Remember when we were doing a podcast? <laughs> Okay, I'm and you remember what I was going to tell you about how playing video games can actually be good for your eyes? Yeah, remember that, G-Well? Now I'm going to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow>. <laughs> <laughs> Not for my eyes. No, because someone who can't stop blinking. I know. Some, or he someone can't blink. blink. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't blink. He's like, my eyes are so red and sore. I'm like, blink. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got tears coming down and everything. <laughs> He's like, I will not blink. I must... F- I must win the game. <laughs> and, yeah, well, I might miss something if I blink and then I could die. Yeah. Very, very difficult. Well, you don't have to sit there and stare See, all the time. L- l- think about it. I could have my cardboard Gee, cut wow. out. And See, here, here's the thing. I could have a little sign saying, Gee, wow. Calm okay, yourself Okay, shut down. up about theory. <laughs> 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 okay, Mike, you know how you love to drive in the fog, right? Wait, what? Oh, yeah, he loves oh, it. Oh, I love how it. Loved it. How you love to drive in the fog. Oh, oh my God, it's so amazing. Like, playing first-person shooters can actually help you. Because when you're, like, the, 
you like if you're f fighting on the screen, you're looking for shapes, you're looking for that can actually help you driving through fog because you're actually picking out shapes through the fog. So essentially it could help prevent you from wrecking. Yes. Where was that a week ago? <laughs> well, you know, I've been playing enough first-person shooters. It wasn't in the fog. <laughs> <laughs> so that could actually... Really? That's what they're saying. I totally, Which, I mean, it makes I totally sense, agree with if that. If you're sitting there staring at a screen and you're looking for small objects, I mean, a lot of times you can't make out exactly what you're shooting, but you can tell that's a person. You're going off the outlines. Yeah. Same thing if you're driving. I mean, when it's fog, all you can see are sh different shades of gray. True. But, like, through the different shades, you can see the different, what shapes. You can say, the, okay, this is a car coming up on my left. This is the, so the trees to the right. And and sometimes I go, this is Southern Hill, but okay. Well, no, see, I totally agree with that because there's a lot of <laughs> hunters out there. And whenever they first start hunting, they have a problem, like, finding all the animals and stuff like that. But over time, you gain a skill from it and you, you catch every little thing. So I totally agree with that. I believe that's possible. Oh, great. You're bringing hunting and fishing into this. <laughs> I'm just saying it. It's the only thing I have to it's get It's very, this very piece. tempting. <laughs> I don't know tempting. how well it can help with fishing, though. <laughs> you spot oh, the you'll splashes. Be surprised. <laughs> catch the splashes, the surfaces. Go down to the river the and every water, little wave. Catch the fins. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. every little wave. Catch the collar. It's a fish. No, it was just a bug. It's like, it's moving. Oh, wait. I all the water's moving. Yeah. yeah, actually, whenever you're in the military, they teach you attention to detail, attention to detail. It is a skill that you are taught. Uh, oh, I thought something else. Well, good for you, G-Roll. I want to hear more about something that that somebody has. <laughs> Jim's got some papers here. What does he have? Nothing. You don't got nothing? No. Wait, you have stuff. <laughs> Am I the only one that didn't work this week? <laughs> oh, I, I do have stuff. I was just thinking of hunting now. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, he brings, you know, they bring a good point Okay, you want to talk about rehabilitating? Like, I watch, like, a movie. You know, I do hunt a lot, you know. Okay, the, the oh, whole we're thing, not going to No, the, the whole thing that, you know, what, playing games, I play a lot of first-person sh first shooter games. It's pretty much what I, all I play, so he, you know, he's right. Because, you, I mean, you're trying to watch every single little thing, object on there, something that kind of moves on those games, you know, anything from a sniper sitting somewhere. And, you know, it's, I do hunt a lot, and it is hard. It looks as if everything's camouflaged, so you got to spot the things out. And we'll even be watching a movie, and then there'll be, like, a squirrel in the background in a tree. I'm like, oh, look, there's a squirrel. <laughs> and they're like, what? I'm like, oh, uh, you're yeah. crazy, Jim. But it's just picking out that little bit of movement and even watching a movie. I'm like, oh, look, there's something there. Oh, look, hey, this is here. I'm not so much with the, you know, like, oh, this was there, and then now, you know, flashback, and it's not there i'm more or less oh you see this thing here do you see this thing here i'm the opposite i always catch on things like that's my thing like i love watching movies and i always catch the things that change you're one of those people <laughs> that freaking sit there and point out all the, the, all the mistakes and it's like shut up seriously yep, shut up. ask jim i do that all the time I'm like off topic oh. yeah well yeah. see this can help two ways too because not only does it help your vision it can help your hand eye coordination so oh, yeah my, had Mikey played more, like maybe he could have veered a different direction and I hit the car. Actually, you know what's funny about that, Steve, <laughs> is, is actually it's funny because <clears throat> like on his truck, the right side, of, you know, the, the passenger side of his truck was where it hit, right? Yeah. Now, of course, I was behind him, but so I did try to steer actually when I look at mine because the, the, uh, the driver's side of mine is what screwed up. I probably should have drove the other way. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. That's not good. <laughs> no, I've done it a couple times up here. I speak on the cars and stuff where I just missed getting an accident from these cars just pulling out front. Oh, no. They get through a stop sign. One, I don't know how I missed them. And then another one, uh, coming down to 217, pulled out in front of me. And I was able enough to hurry. You know, I mean, it's, it's weird. Cause, I mean, maybe it is from pl playing all the games. I don't know. Could be. But, like, I'd be driving down, especially the one he cut out, and it's a small road anyway. He'd come out through a stop sign, looked the one way, but didn't look my way, so he just started coming out, and then he looked and see me. He was already halfway out. I hit the brakes, but I was already up there. I ended up, you know, instantly just cutting that wheel, slamming it to the left, getting around, and got around him, somehow not hitting him. And then the other one later pulled out of this van or something. I was cruising down. I'm like, well, they see me because it's open. Well, she pulled right out, right out in front of me. I had to hurry up, cut that wheel again, swerved around her. I'm like, I don't know how the heck I did it. I said, especially that one. I'm, I keep telling people, I, said, I have no idea how I missed that truck. Because he came out, and I had to cut around him, and 
he was still moving and he did hit the brakes but it was just no enough room and i don't know how i managed to actually that quick cut around him without even touching him could I be mean, could be the games yeah know. games games are awesome All right, it's time for your last and final hint. Get this game. Your weapon is the disc armor, a shield with a long chain attached to it. Oh, man. They better be getting this one. Yeah, because we don't your got much time. Hints. If you know it, whisper to whisper one of us, us, any of us. But just whisper. And, if you've, and if you already won, whisper. if you already did it and you won, well, that's cool. We're just going to play this part anyway, so deal with it. <laughs> And we'll just announce your name on next week's show. Yeah, we'll announce your name somehow. I don't know. Jim will announce your name. I don't know. He's doing a show Maybe. next week. I don't know. My show. Yeah. I don't want to. I won't. I think it is. Yeah. Definitely not G-Well. She mm -hmm. just said it last week. Yeah, but like anything else, I mean, you do need moderation, though. True. No. Because, I mean... Yeah. I mean <laughs> They might be good for you. I mean, also, either they can boost your creativity. Like I said, they can help your memory because you have to, like, okay, like Mortal Kombat. Uh, my memory's not very being tested because I'll never remember my moves. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when I play Rocksmith, though. You know, like, it's teaching me to play guitar and teaching me hand movements, but my brain's stupid and doesn't remember everything. I blame it on my brain. But it is still, brain. it's still activity. It's still teaching. But too much of it, I mean, you're... If you sit there and play too much, then you're not getting the physical activity that you would need. <clears throat> unless unless you bounce back and forth playing whatever you're playing and go play Connect or something where you're being physical. Yeah, which I need to get more like exercise stuff going on here. Yes, I need exercise. Then there's another helping thing. They do have exercise-based games. Yes, True. which I want for the Connect. But then I realized I just watch a video and that works just as good. <laughs> True. And yeah, because I used to be really into the whole gaming thing, and some people probably like it because it just, and that's what I thought at first. It was more interactive to me. But then it was like, oh, there's like that P90 stuff. That I just, it just works better now than I think. Then. But that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, all right. Speaking of like, uh, like Steve was saying about the good side of the games, I got 10 reasons why everyone should play video games. 10 reasons why they should play. Yes, why they should. And, uh, one is. Playing video games enhances the ability to think quickly as the game proceeds. The mind can make quick fire decisions on the next strategy to be taken. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we were just talking about in like real life. Yeah. Uh, two, many children who are avid players fare better in vision tests. Video game exercises the eyes. Except for mine. Yeah, because you got to learn how I to don't, blink. I don't blink. Many games nurture log uh, logical skills. Gamers have to build cities or entire nations or plan wars such as that, you know, they are one, so you got to strategize. It teaches that. View a game sharpen thinking abilities and problem-solving skills. Both these qualities are much appreciated and valued in our fast-paced world. Right. You will be astonished to know that kids who play video games excel at school and in math. Playing games increases no, brain that's function. A, that's a lie. I don't do well math at on, all. Depending on the type of game. Um, math game. Playing improves coordination of hand movements and ability to concentrate without getting disturbed. The games captive captivate the children and the kids can play with huge levels of focusing or focus blocking out all sounds and disturbances from surroundings, so it's able to focus a lot better. Since many gamers games are based on facts, kids learn a lot about pioneers, business planning, town or architecture, communicating and more. We just feel that three dimensional of the games make history easy to learn. Gaming improves social skills as kids learn to play as a group with each performing different functions. Many games have role-playing incorporated, and from a young age, kids learn quickly from the heroes they choose to be. So, teamwork. Yay. Video games research proves enhanced hand-eye coordination as well as reflexes. That's what we're talking about. Definitely know all about that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to go stranger. Ten, ten, number 10, creativity, <laughs> imagination, and storytelling are all improved and children are able to comprehend the flow of a story as well as its basis. Video games ignite a spirit of adventure and daring in, ci in city kids who are otherwise living in predictable environments. So basically, let's go get into a gang and kill people. Just joking. Yeah, stay, that's where they stay out of that because they're staying indoors. <laughs> yeah, let's never go outside. Uh, in couple, this world, why not? You know, positive effects that I found is... The strangest of the positive effects of video games can be seen in the healthcare sector, like we've been talking about. Uh, people, especially youngsters, who are undergoing painful treatment for alignments like cancer can use video games to distract themselves from the, all the pain and extended periods of time there. Video games have a positive psychological effects as well. Certain gamers that 
Games that are used as part of a comprehensive program can further help autistic children and other children with development disorders. Yes. And studies have also shown that playing video games can improve mental facilities, such as hand-eye coordination. More intelligent games, such as strategy and puzzle games, can also improve problem solving and provide intellectual stimulation as well. Ooh. That's a couple of things I got on <coughs> with the whole, yay, games are good. Yeah, you know what? That's funny <laughs> Go about games. Go that's, games. What's funny about that is when I was, I took a class. Oh, what was this? It was a uh, oh, wow, maybe 2010 when I did this class. But I was doing this class and um. You had to make a presentation, a portfolio, basically, of your work that you've done so far. Mm -hmm. And one of the people there was, <coughs> was working for a company, and I can't remember the names now. <coughs> and the company, uh, what he was working on was a game that helped rehabilitate people, and I forget why, what, what they were working for, but the game, mm -hmm. he couldn't show much of it off because it was under uh, the, company's, the company's thing. But even right. though he was... But it was actually he what he was, they were doing was helping. I don't know if it was like for strokes or something or something oh. like that. But it was the game was to rehabilitate people, and I was like, that's pretty cool, man. Hmm. You know. So yeah, go games, go games. Jim, didn't you say you had something about what? I mean, obviously games are good in yeah, moderation, right? So, I mean, you can't get you can get addicted. I mean, you, I've heard you hear too much about people losing their jobs and all that because. Oh, yeah. Or like the one I was reading where the guy was a straight A student all the way up until he bought a Xbox or a PS3 or something and then his grades dropped because he spent most of his time playing the game and not doing his homework until finally he sold the system and went back to the way he was. Oh. So didn't didn't you say you had a list of negatives or Uh yeah, I got I got yeah, five reasons why video games can be bad for you. Before you say that real quick, I just want to say, because I have a lot of systems, bad. right? Mm -hmm. I never get addicted to playing games. Never. It's because you're ADHD. I'm yeah, ADHD, Yeah, some Mike. people are alcoholics and some people are social drinkers. You're an alcoholic, I know that. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, it's hard. you have to realize there are certain... There's differences between people. All you have to do like is this. remember... Anybody can quit. I've quit a hundred times. Right. Yeah. That, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. yeah, top five reasons, you know, why they could be bad for you. Number one, video games could be addictive, which, you know, Steve was just talking about. Mm, yep. Um, kids and, you know, even adults spend a great deal of time, you know, even reading the magazines, participating in online game forums, look for future game releases, and, of course, spending countless hours playing games. When they aren't doing any of these things, they're wishing they were. You know, they're just taking most of their time and their day to worry about games. It's just games, 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 you know, not go out and enjoy a day. Yeah. Uh, video games can be expensive. <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody knows they can, but if you actually really sit back and think about your stay current with the latest video games and hardware, you'll spend anything from 40, 50 bucks. Well, now it's like, you know, even 60 bucks for a game. Most gamers have 50 to 100 games. And also, you know, you got two different consoles and then a good PC. So you're talking at least thousands of dollars a year just on video games. Right. Video games can hurt your relationships, as we heard, you know, you hear a lot about it. Mm hmm. Uh, in one case, about that, in the most stream sample, there was a couple that was so consumed with playing video games that they ended up neglecting their three children to the point that they were malnourished, naked, covered in their own feces. You know, ex that <laughs> is an extreme, <laughs> but, you know, it does. It, it, causes, it causes a lot with relationships because they rather play the game than pay attention to anybody else. Something like that just makes me wonder. It's like, how can you get that lost into it? That right. That I know, can even exactly, happen. right? I, I cannot imagine getting that, yeah. that into it. Part of the thing also I found, like, for WoW, wow. wow. We heard a wow is that wow. actually... There's a, a group, a sport group that started their own support about WoW, about people who play WoW, like their husband, or boyfriend, girlfriend, anybody who plays WoW plays it so much that they kind of, you know, they worry about their game and kind of yeah, push the other person, their significant other, whoever, off the side. So somebody actually created a group for a while and aimed at those people who, you know, their partners play and they get ignored all the time. They actually have a group that go in and talk about it and this and this. And talking about that reminds me of there's another YouTube video I've seen where the guy he's sitting there he's always playing WoW mm -hmm. and his girlfriend comes up tries to get him to go to bed I'll be there in a, after bed I'll be there in a bed she never shows up never shows up so she starts coming out wearing like 
sexy little lingerie and stuff, and he still never comes to bed. Still never comes to bed. So finally, she's going to try to. She's talking to her friend. She's going to change things up, try to spice things up. And so finally, she comes out. She's dressed up like a night elf. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And she's there swaying, like dancing in the doorway, and he's standing, he's looking, he's like, Are you retarded? Night elves suck. (laughs) 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 Oh, man. Great. Uh, Number four video games can be distracting. Um, Like reading a good book, taking care of bills, writing an article, vetting something, mowing the lawn, anything is simply not a priority. Your priority is, hey, when I get off, I'm going to playing this game. That's when know? I get. That's when I don't like. When I get nervous, when I'm like, eh, I don't want to do it because I want to do something else. Because oh, yeah. you'd rather, I'd, I'd rather be outside doing work. Like right. That. I mean, I would rather shape, kind of be like rather be outside too. But I've, I've said, been down there and played like those multiplayer games when I was playing online. And I don't know. It's matter. As soon as I got home, I hurried up, showered, and jumped around the game. I was on the game till eleven o'clock. Where I'm like, okay, I better get to bed. I got work in the morning. Next day, same thing. I didn't care about anything. I did. I mean, I kept up with the bills and stuff, but I was like, man, yeah, I got a game to play. Yeah. Number five, video games can rob you of your real life experiences. I don't have one of those. Like so. instead of, like you said, instead of going outside, taking a trip, riding a bike, cruising down the road, going fishing, um, oh. just going out and doing something while you just, you know, want to, like, you just want to play the game. So you miss out a lot See, about life. That's Does that fun count th- if you don't have a life? Yeah. What if you don't have a life? <laughs> that's a good well, question, then Steve. Now you're not trying to make a life. Thing. Okay. See, I don't ever really felt like that. I don't think because I, I was like, I, I had this thing where if I'm playing for like more than an hour, so I'm like, I gotta get out of here. That's how I am. Tell you all. I just I can't sit there and do that stuff for too long. Yeah. It's that whole o- getting old age thing. I think. Probably. Back in my day, we could probably do games for five hours. With the bad part, the only other thing I have is bad things that happen with people, like deaths. Yes. You have anything about that, Steve? Any kind of deaths or anything? No, I, I, you, the, no. this negative part is all you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that kind of sounds bad. Oh, okay, it sounds negative. Which side are through, you on? <laughs> you know that. I'm a negativity kind of guy. Well, I'll kind of go through these like kind of quick. So we're getting close on time here. Uh, top 10 deaths that I found. Uh, Korean killed by StarCraft in 2005. It's an extremely addictive game, and when the man identified only as Lee succumbed to death, authorities said that it was because of heart failure steaming from exhaustion. He played it till he died. Which confuses me, because... I said quick. <laughs> I'm just wondering, because people have get insomnia and they can't sleep. That would, you would think they, have, they would have exhaustion. They probably do. That's why they get the medicines and everything. Oh. Try to offset that. I mean, my guess. I don't know. Uh, number nine, 18 year old killed by an arcade. An autopsy revealed scar tissue in Peter's heart that effectively made him a ticking time bomb set off by a video game, which apparently increases blood pressure and heart rate dramatically. Yeah, it's called exercise. Yeah, I don't think that's right to blame that on the game. It could have been anything they were doing. Right, then. Apparently, he was playing a game. Yeah. He, so the game gets blamed. He was a teen. He was doing something else while he's playing a game. Right. <laughs> he was multitasking. <laughs> there you go. Uh, number eight, vengeance killing for virtual sword. I can't pronounce his name. So this guy led his dragon saber for the online game legend of Mir to three to his friend, blah blah blah, and being a resource for a hole, sold the thing for about six hundred seventy-five dollars. Of course, the guy, you know, being tough and being a bigger a hole and less resourceful, stabbed the heck out of his friend while very with a very real knife killing him for doing it oh number seven ever quest suicide this you know could be but the fact is a 21 year old played for hours online game on the online game everquest before fatally shooting himself while sitting in front of his computer his mother found him with notes relating to the game strewn about the room so i don't know you know whatever happened but he was playing the game all kind of stuff laying around really got into the game and something must have happened he didn't like Wow. Number six. 13 year old commits wild suicide. Zio Yi was 13 when he jumped from the top of a 24 story building. The note he left behind for his parents was written from the point of view of a video game character. Further, the note detailed his wish to meet three of his gaming friends in the afterlife. His parents asked him at one point about his addiction. He replied that he had been poisoned by games and could no longer control himself. Son of Sam. Well, see, this all goes back into the cast we had a while back about like getting lost into virtual realities right number five 13 year old murders women for women for the subscription money 
2007, a 13-year-old boy named Din the Dan killed an 81-year-old woman and stole her money in order to fund an online gaming addiction. Vietnamese police report that Dan struggled the woman with a piece of rope, then buried her in a pile of sand in front of his house. People are so stupid. Four, man kills toddler over broken Xbox. People are really (gasps) freaking stupid. Tyrone Spillman, 27, played long hours on his Xbox. When his 17-month-old daughter pulled some cords and tipped the Xbox to the ground, breaking it, he became completely enraged. He struck her with such force that it cracked her skull several times. The autopsy, too, revealed a broken arm that was at least two weeks old, which social workers had failed to identify previously. <sighs> Number- That's- See, I can relate to being mad because because my PS2 got broke because of the kids jumping on a bed and knocking it off the dresser. But mm. yeah, they, they, there's no call for that. Yeah, no, exactly. That's too Our, far. Uh, my nephew shoved. Uh, what was it? I, I used the, the uh, DS, SD card in the, in the in the the Wii. The Wii. But we no, now I'm talking about Michael. Remember yeah. when we broke our Xbox? Oh, yeah, an SD card. Oh, then the Wii, the Xbox, yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry, wrong one. Screw up, Jim. <laughs> stuck in the Xbox. I mean, all it would is just yeah. one, run a, or one eject or something. Yeah. Number three, Daniel Petrick kills mother over Halo 3. After his mother and father took Halo 3 away from him, a uh, 17-year-old unlocked a safe in which they hidden it. Also in the safe was a 9 millimeter pistol. He then took the game and the pistol to his parents' room, asked them to close their eyes before because he had a surprise for them, and shot them both in the head. The father survived the critical injuries, but the mother died instantly. <laughs> Number two, toddler beaten to death with game controller. Derezabel Bees, the 2-year-old daughter to 19-year-old Nita Bees, was beaten to death with a video game controller by Nita's then-boyfriend, Harvey Lee or Harvey L. Johnson in April last year. Bizarrely, the girl was brought to her mother unconscious and soaking wet because Howard had tried to revive her in a bathtub. <laughs> and this this one you know, controversy about how it happened, but GTA inspired cop killing. There's little doubt that Devin Moore's cop killing spree and subscription theft of a police cruiser were inspired by the video game series Grand Theft Auto. Moore took one gun from an officer, shot three others with it, and fled the station in a police car. Moore was obsessed with the GTA series, the video games, and once captured, he told police, life is like a video game, you gotta die sometime. Oh, wonderful. That's what I got. <laughs> wonderful. People are idiots. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> People Those are guys stupid. Make games bad. And that's why I sit there and go, I don't yeah, get it. Yeah, some of that stuff's just, it's terrible. I mean, I don't know why you would, like Steve said, you know, like that. his PS2 or whatever got broke, but it's not like he's sitting there with a <laughs> controller, like, oh, you son of a, and it starts whacking them. Exactly, you know? they're kids. They it's called control, know. you know, it mm-hmm. happens. You know, yeah, I get mad if something, mine breaks, but I always know I can. it can be replaced. It's like, calm down, yeah, it makes you mad, but... Eh, you just need you a little sunshine, it. just a little exactly. sunshine. Exactly, you can't replace a person. No. Yeah, you can. <laughs> get to the bedroom for 10 minutes and wait nine months. There you go. All right. I need to go do my own therapy. <laughs> kill some people after that. Virtually. Yep. Not really. Virtually. So, bottom line, games are good, but there are a bunch of people that are there that are stupid. So. Stupid. I agree yes, with that agreed. one. Agreed. So, here with Jim the Fishing Buddha, ADHD Mike, G-Wow. Hey. And me, Stevie Christ. Go slap a joystick.